Welcome back to Dr. Paul's lectures and today I want to talk a few minutes about sinus bradycardia. Sinus bradycardia very important EKG you need to identify because many deadly clinical conditions are associated with this problem. So basically the name says it all. It is bradycardia. The heart is going slow. If you look here 300, 150, 100, 75, 50, 40. So almost the heart rate here is like 45 beats per minute. So you can go from here to here. It has a beautiful P wave, QRS complex, and the T wave. And uh, this is how sinus bradycardia looks. And this may not be the appearance in every lane. If you look here, you see in lead 1, 2 and AVL, you are seeing an upright P wave. This is also sinus bradycardia here. And you can see the how slow the heart rate is going here. And the P wave in AVR is like inversed. Okay, so it is upright and it is down right here in the AVR. So it depends, the, the, the P wave, it depends which lead you are looking at. So overall, it's very easy to identify sinus bradycardia and EKG. Once you uh, identify, you don't stop there. You always look at uh, underlying condition. Remember, uh, it could be a very, very normal finding, especially in athletes. So what happens in a well-conditioned athletes is, they have this exercise induced vagal increase. So their vagal tone increases as they exercise more and more. This increased vagal tone decreases the heart rate and results in bradycardia. You should also think about genetic mutations like HCN4 and SCN5A. When people have these mutations, they will have sinoatrial node dysfunction and as a result, they can have sinus bradycardia. And these are just normal. Even some elderly patients may have bradycardia with no clinical significance. But in many other patients, you need to think about any underlying conditions causing it, like sinus node dysfunction, medications. Think about sympatholytic drugs. You know that, like sympathetic system increases heart rate. So anything that... Uh, uh, blocks the sympathetic nervous system causes bradycardia like drugs like beta blockers and methyl dopa clonidin and parasympathomimetic agents like acetylcholine carbocol acetylcholine as inhibitors opioids can cause bradycardia sedatives can cause bradycardia cimetidin digitalis calcium channel blockers amiodarone lithium organophosphate compounds so uh, they can cause bradycardia. You remember, in organophosphate poisoning, we use atropine. Why? We want to increase the heart rate. So that is one way to think about it. And uh, you also see this in acute myocardial infarction, sleep apnea, vagal activity, and uh, also in infections. So certain infection can cause cyanide as bradycardia, acidemia, hypoxia. So if a child has hypoxia or acidemia, they might be having sinus bradycardia. So uh, if you find hypoxia and acidemia and correct that problem, you are basically saving the life of the child by just looking at their sinus bradycardia and the EKG and correcting their hypoxia or acidemia. So, you see the importance of recognizing sinus bradycardia on an EKG. So the treatment depends on underlying cause. You can think about atropine and sympathomimetic drugs uh, can be useful. So I wanted to share you, with you this uh, beautiful uh, EKG of sinus bradycardia. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to our channel.